Back in about August or September, we had a really bad incident here. Michelle sent me a message while I was at work. She said that something got into the turkey pen and has killed all of our turkeys. We're going to show you a clip real quick of what happened. Okay, Michelle sent me a message this morning while I was at work saying that something got into our chicken tractor and killed all of our turkeys. We generally put up 400 pounds of turkey meat every year from these turkeys that we raised. And we thought that we had it fixed good enough that it would deter any kind of varmint. But this is my first time seeing it as we're walking out here. So Michelle, just be advised it shows dead animals. So if you've got a weak stomach, you don't want to see it, you might want to cut away now. But uh, we're going to give you a highlight of what, what has happened and what we're going to do to fix it. So as you can see, all this tarp has been tattered down the side. They attempted to tear in right here. We believe this was a coyote, just from the damage that has been done. So they try to tear in right there. We don't have any damage along the back side, but we had this, um, we had this fiberglass panels back here. And look down the side right here. So they really, put a lot of effort on this side to tear into it and it uh, looks like they ate the the center out of all of our turkeys we had nine turkeys in here they're about three months old it's really upsetting because we have we've invested seventy dollars just in buying these birds as chicks Yeah, they tried to get in right there also. And it's been raining. I don't see any footprints here. Just, you know, see what... I suspect it's a coyote. We have seen coyotes down through here before. There's one of the turkey heads laying on the ground right there. And then right here on the front, this is where they eventually did get in. They tried a hole right here, but they have, were eventually tore the wire back right there and got in. Now. To compensate from that, we, we made a couple of decisions. One is, we need to run some more turkeys. So we went ahead and put in an order for some more turkeys. We still had time to grow our turkeys up before the cool weather hit. When we decided to do that, we decided to go ahead and do another batch of chickens. And so we have already ran through, processed, and put into the freezer our chicken harvest. Right here on our pen, before we got all of our birds in, I went back and ordered or uh, went down to Lowe's and bought uh, some regular fencing. This is heavier duty than the chicken wire. Now, luckily we were able to raise our turkeys up without incident of uh, more varmints, whether it be coyotes or fox that come over here and got in our pen. So I put a board up here on the, on the door. We sewed up the hole where they went into the pen at, and then we went all the way around with this, uh, this three foot fence, they would have to stand up on their back legs to get up into here. And if that's, they're tall enough to do that, then we got a bigger animal than just your typical coyote around here. So we decided that three foot fence would be enough to keep any of the varmints out. We ran it right down to the ground and we put staples um, every couple of inches all the way down. We had to go and buy a new tarp to cover it with and rather than take the old tarp off, we just doubled it up and put this over the old tarp so we have double the uh, protection in some areas now. All right, today is harvest day. We had a turkey that had a splay leg and he could no longer walk around the pen. He got to the point where he could only sit down and move from the feed to the water and we didn't want that for that turkey. That's the turkey you saw us taking over to the kill cone. These are not quite where we want them yet. We'd like to harvest our turkeys at about 50 pounds, and these are probably 35 to 40 pounds, except for the one hen. Hens are always gonna run smaller. But these gobblers, they're almost right where we want them at. So we're gonna go ahead and do a processing of that one. We're gonna give these probably just another week or two before we start harvesting these. And today's a good day. It's about 70 degrees out. We've got Christmas in a few days. I was concerned that when we ran this batch of turkeys, we would be processing in the dead of winter, freezing our hands off, trying to uh, 
trying to harvest that meat. But we've got good weather and we're gonna go ahead and take advantage of it today. So let's go ahead and grab this turkey out of the kill cone and we're gonna put him in the scalding pot. We've got that big 160 quart scalding pot. We got a big massive burner underneath it. We got a really good deal on that. We were on Facebook yard sales and a lady sold that to us that was also processing turkeys. Her and her husband went through a divorce. They liquidated some assets and we got the pot. Yeah, we got, we got the pot for like a hundred dollars or something like that. You can't beat that. And I've got this big metal uh, kill cone that I made out of this heavier gauge wire. And for the last three years, this is what we've used. It's worked really well. Bend the ends down so that when you're putting the turkey over in there, you're not snagging the turkey. You don't want to cause the turkey any kind of discomfort or pain, you know, as it's going through this process. Put them down there, we slit the artery, let them bleed out. In about five minutes, they go to sleep, and that's the end of that. It's good and humane. Say a little quick prayer, make it kosher, bleed out the turkey. So we'll go ahead and lift this turkey out of here and take them on to the processing table. This turkey is probably in the 20 pound range, 25 pound or something like that. Nowhere near what we typically want. We can uh, go get the scales real quick and weigh and see how much the harvest uh, weight of this turkey is. But me being able to just carry this turkey like this, he's probably in the 20 pound range. If this was a 50 pound turkey, I'd have to get the golf cart and put them on the back of the golf cart and uh, carry them up here to the table. Now we have a nicer processing table inside our garage where it's air conditioned. We could turn on the heat if it was the dead of winter. But for one turkey, we didn't feel like going through all that. That's right. So we just got our little uh, aluminum table out. Probably from the time I bled out the turkey, boiled our water, and I had the turkey on ice, probably less than an hour. I just took the temperature of this water. It's about 155 degrees right where you want scalding water to be. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn that off. I'm gonna give him a quick shower just to get some of that dirt off of him before we dump him. I typically don't do this to the birds, but he was wallowing on the ground and really dirty, so. Even though we typically skin these all the way out, I still don't want all that dirt on the table and trying to uh, keep the meat clean. But you see how that one leg was splayed out? So if something bad has happened to this bird that has flipped it out of joint or broke its leg or something. So and we give them about 15 seconds in the pot, thereabouts. We'll check the feathers. See how easy the, the primary type feathers come out. The little pin feathers, they're a little bit easier, they're quicker. So we don't really test with the pin feathers. But if you get something on the wing or on the tail. That's generally where uh, you want to test the, the effects of the scalding yet. But uh, I think 100% of this turkey is going to go to grind. We keep these turkeys on ice for a day and allow the meat to go through rigor mortis and then the muscles to relax. It makes it a little more tender. All right, see there, those feathers came right out of the tail. So this bird's ready. All right, get a feed sack, put all the feathers in. All the feathers will go back into our compost bin where we just bled the turkey out. So the one turn it <laughs> she likes feathers too. So the, all these will be composted back to nothing. We put a lot of feathers in there from our chicken harvest. 
and those are gone already. They have already turned into compost. All right, since we're going to decide to keep these wings, and we usually have a uh, turkey wing night, we usually get like one wing per person. So if we do one turkey, that's enough for, uh, for the three of us to have wings. But usually slice right through that skin. And then I find that joint, that's right in there. And then take your blade and run right through where that joint hinges, and you'll be able to separate that wing off there. And look how much meat is on that wing. But uh, we'll go ahead and clean these on up. Get most of these feathers off we can. We'll put that straight on ice. Now you got the little drumette from the wing that's down here. We'll go ahead and remove that. So you can see the natural curvature of where that is all connected. Go in right there, we're gonna start looking for that joint. And we want to kind of stay off the breast meat because we're gonna grind that into a turkey burger. There we go, nice little drumette. That's bigger than a chicken leg. around and grab the other drumette. Clean some of those feathers off. And then just go in, start looking for the looking for the joint. Nice little drumette full of meat. <laughs> now we'll go ahead and take these legs off. We're going to skin these legs out, so I'm not too super worried about these being uh, free of feathers. But I wanted most of the feathers off this bird. I have tried cleaning a bird with the feathers on it, and it's really just miserable trying to navigate everything. You're taking a leg and a thigh. A leg and a thigh in one, one thing, in one attempt. Honeybee wants to visit today. Honeybee wants to go to A little bit of bruising in there on that leg. Cut that off of that. I don't want all that, that bruised meat. See that green in there? 
Yeah. And then try to get as much as that back meat. Yeah, because this will go into grinding. Too. Yeah. Now it's easier to skin if you go ahead and skin it before the meat gets cold. Plus you're not freezing your fingers off handling the meat. Let's see if we can pull it the other direction. Running my thumb under the skin. I'm pulling the skin away from the meat. Almost need some catfish skinning pliers. <laughs> <laughs> you got two beautiful cats behind you. Posing. Yep. Ella. Oh. Mittens and Ella. See if she wants any turkey skin. Like, like, oh, Alright, there we go. Leg and thigh. Now what we'll have to do is we'll take our knife after tomorrow and start peeling all this meat off the leg. It's a painful process, but when you put get that good, rich, dark meat mixed in with that turkey breast for the grind, mm -hmm. it adds a lot of flavor. So you want to make sure that you're grinding in some dark meat. We try to get as much dark meat in there as we can. Mm -hmm. The wings are just too painful <laughs> to pick the meat off of. I remember my dad, when he would go into the turkey hunting and harvest the turkey, he'd always have these uh, ropes fixed up on the backyard tree on a limb, and he would hang the turkey by the feet, and then he would dress it like you would a deer or something. That sounds pretty cool. Oh, and by the way, we didn't weigh this before we started taking it apart. That's okay. We'll weigh the next one. Oh, can't do it from there. All right. We'll flip them over on its back so that wrist hangs down. Actually, I should have left the wings on so that the, the turkey would... Right. Support itself. Right. So, do we take the leg off and then just the breast? open it? Just, open, just it. open it up. Yeah. So that the leg falls Pull away. Down. You have something to rest on. There you go. Just open it right up. That should make it a little easier. Ooh, I got into the guts on that one. Mm -hmm. Cavity. You can smell it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Thank goodness there's no smell of vision. Yeah, that smells right. Okay, you should be able to get the breast now. Go ahead and take that skin right on off there. 
boneless, skinless turkey breast. Put this neck around and it'll hold it up. No, just the neck, not the body of the bird. There you go. Yeah, it helps. Somewhat. I guess um, Ella, Cruella is a vegetarian. She's the only cat not caring about the turkey. <laughs> All right, so right in here is the feed sack. We don't want to get into that. So we're taking our knife and just kind of going between the feed sack and the breast. Just letting that feed sack fall away. Crop, some people's got different names for it, crawl. And then we start finding where that breast bone is. And we're gonna follow right down the edge of that breast bone. And we have a, a smaller knife that Michelle likes to use. And a smaller knife is a little bit better when you're getting next to that breast bone. That blade just seems to fall right against that, that bone very nicely. Yep, let's go ahead and open this thing up and show them the, the tenderloin part of the breast. When you get into these uh, hybrid type birds that are grown for meat, they're called double-breasted. Double-breasted means you get a big breast like this on the outside, but then you get a tenderloin right underneath it that you typically don't have an enlarged tenderloin like this on a uh, on a uh, just a heritage breed bird. So we like to go and make these two separate meats. That's nice and tender. If you want to save this tenderloin and cut that into nuggets and put that in a fryer. Man, there's nothing better than a good tenderloin. Turkey nugget. Turkey nugget. They taste really good. And we have done that in the past. But we use an air fryer. Yeah. And I've had them deep fried as a kid, and they're great. Go ahead and cut that tendon off of that tenderloin before we take that on out. So I have something to pull against. Give that to a a cat. <laughs> I think she's a vegetarian. I just want to be alone with my peppers. I think she just likes her peppers. She's a pepper cat. Look at that. Nice big tenderloin. Nice big tenderloin. Mm -hmm. Like I said, you cut that up into half inch medallions and fry it or air fry it. That's really good. So now we got that out of the way, we'll just take our knife and we'll just go ahead and separate the rest of the breast. breast meat. It's not bad for a, uh, an immature bird that had to be harvested. That's a pretty good little meat. We'll clean that up underneath uh, some water before we grind that. Get all those little feathers off and stuff. I'm just laying that in there now. We're actually going to come back and we'll submit, submerge the meat under the ice for that to sit and chill for 24 hours. All right, we're halfway there.
typically whenever we harvest our turkeys, we do one a day because there's just so much work into getting one bird that we don't want to be out here breaking our backs doing a full harvest. So I'll come home after work, we'll knock out one bird, we'll go inside, we'll grind and package a bird and just kind of get that going. Uh, most we've ever done is, what, seven birds on a harvest for a season? What did we have last year? So usually within a week we can do our first, our full harvest and not kill ourselves doing it. We just set aside knowing that that week, don't plan anything else for that week, we're going to be harvesting and packaging and putting up birds. So. But I hope you enjoyed this nice little clip of, of how we do this year's harvest. All right. And uh, keep watching, we're going to do a video too of the rest of the process and we'll show the, the rest of the process going through. But we just want to talk to you about what happened uh, previous in the year with the coyotes killing our turkeys and the reason we're harvesting this young bird. Hope you enjoyed the video. Like, subscribe, share on your social media. And let us know if you enjoy putting your fresh turkey meat in, into the freezer or if this is something new to you that you would like to do. If you've got questions, leave us in the comments. We'll try to get back to you. Thanks for watching.